more than 100 hostages taken from Israel are still to believed to be in Gaza. And while many families will be gathering for the last night of Hanukkah, local mom Shea Baumgart will be praying for their health, obviously, in the return of her cousin, who is still being held hostage by Hamas. Uh, Shea, good morning. Good Thanks morning. for being here. Thank um, you for having me. Uh, I know you said you were a little nervous, but I, I, I don't... L listen, I, I want you to try to explain because your, your cousin is still being held hostage by Hamas. Yes. Uh, but it was, mo it was more members of the family were also taken. Uh, explain who is still being held and who was freed. Yes, so my cousin and his girlfriend, Marav, were taken. They were in their house. And his two sons were at their house because they had split up. Um, so his ex-wife has a house in the same kibbutz, kibbutz near Oz. And the two sons were also taken hostage. They were released on Monday the 27th. Um, after that deliberation of the multiple right. hostages being released. So the sons were released. The following day, his girlfriend was released. But he remained. And he remains. And we were talking earlier about the fact that the, the, your cousin perhaps probably didn't even know or doesn't know that his sons were also taken and vice versa. The Correct. sons didn't know. Like just No one so. knew. They were all separated. So once the sons were released, they said they weren't even together. So the two boys, 16 and 13, oh. not even together. The girlfriend, not even with them. So she hasn't seen my cousin either. So we don't know his state of being, if he's alive. We don't have proof of life. We only have the video that was sent to us a couple of days after the massacre. Those two young boys, I was going to ask you how old they are, so 13 and 16, are they talking? One of them is, but it's hard. Like, they're not explaining what happened. They, it's, it's tragic. You know, they're still in shock. They don't have a house. So they've been displaced because the kibbutz has been demolished. So they're in temporary housing right now. What, um, what are they saying in the little? They didn't get food. It was very minimal. Um, the conditions were rough. They didn't have anywhere to sleep. So it's tough trying to get it out of kids. The oldest one is a little bit more reserved, more shy. So it's harder to get him. But they're in therapy to try to get the story out and to figure out what's going on. Tell, tell us more about your cousin, uh, Yair, is mm -hmm. it? Uh, tell us more about him. He's a light. I mean, it's funny because his name in Hebrew translates to light or, you know, embodies light. And he walks into a room and has this beautiful smile and full of life. Um, he's the life of the party. And to know that he's in darkness in a tunnel, um, who knows? It's just, it's heartbreaking. You see the photos of the family there. I mean, uh, he's, he loves celebrating. He loves his family to pieces. I mean, his entire Facebook feed is always his kids. Yeah. Um, our family loves to sing, so they've been coming up with songs and music just to try to heal in hopes to have him return. But we don't know if he knows that we're looking for him, that we're, you know, there's no communication. In some of these photos, I see a, a necklace, and I see very similar to what you're yes. wearing. What is that? Um, it's a bring them home tag, um, but then on the top in Hebrew it says, our hearts are hit, um, kidnapped in Gaza. Uh, there's a movement called Bring Them Home Now that's been trying to advocate, get the stories out. They have been publicizing on Instagram and Facebook, really to get the stories of these people that they're innocent civilians. They're, they have families, they're mothers, daughters, sons, fathers, you know, there's lives behind that. You know, it's just instead of a face that you see, um, they're trying to put a story behind it and give people meaning. You take us back to October 7th. How did you guys find out that your cousin had been taken, that, that the, the boys had been taken? How did you find out? And, and their mother was not taken because she happened to be at another kibbutz, yes. coincidentally, that very day. Correct. How did you guys find out? We found out through WhatsApp, um, at least for us. Yeah. Um, our family, we've received multiple voicemails or text messages saying, help me. Um, usually when a rocket you know, or a siren goes off, everyone goes to the safe room. Right. So they receive multiple texts and calls saying, we're in the safe room, don't worry. But then once they started hearing noises, like it's outside the door, help me. Um, the 13-year-old Yagil was on the phone with his mom saying, help me, like I'm too young, please help me. And then the line cuts out. I mean, for a mom, like I have three kids at home. I can't even imagine hearing that from my own kid. Uh, and then for my cousin and his girlfriend, she had called her daughter saying, they're here, I hear gunshots, please call the police, call the police, and the line goes dead. So within those couple minutes, we had text messages going to all the family saying, you know, 
please just keep us posted, you know, we'll, we're finding out, we'll, we'll wait. And then days later, still no answer. So it's been a lot of like non-information. We haven't received any information. Um, we're just keeping strong through text and being here in America, it's, it's hard, it's far away. Yeah. You know, we feel helpless. You say you feel helpless. How do you keep that hope going? I, I think about that often when I hear of all these stories of families and you just don't have information, can't imagine what, it, what that feeling would be like to somebody that is your love, your family member. Yeah. You don't know where they are, how they are. They're alive, they're not alive. How do you keep that hope? It's hard. Um, every day, you know, as so I wake up, I check my phone, just praying. Um, my aunt, who's oldest son is the one that's hostage. Um, she, she's keeping strong. You know, when our cousin, when the little ones got released, it was a sign of hope. We were so grateful. Sure. But then again, on the other side, you have our other one um, who isn't. So it's a roller coaster of emotions. It's we're grateful that we got two or three with his girlfriend, but praying that they're okay. Seeing the conditions of the kids, we're like, okay, there, there's hope. Yeah. Um, but day seventy and. Day 70. Day 70. Yeah. Are the kids back with their mom? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys are trying to keep the, the names out there and the faces out there. Uh, that's why you're here, obviously. Um, wh what's the message that you have just for what's going on? Because there's a lot of controversy. Do, do, do you, the bombardment, the war, the way it's happening, the civilian casualties, but you got to get the hostages out. What, what's your take? Conflicting. It's hard, you know, and I was talking to my husband about it, and I just want my family back. That's all I want. Like, politics aside, all the situation, the war aside, like, just bring the families back together and then sort it out. But when you're using, you know, people as pawns, yeah. it's, it's tragic. I can't even fathom it. You know, it's a nightmare that you live every night and day thinking, when I wake up, it'll be over. Uh, Shay Baumgart, we thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, thank you for sharing your story. Happy Hanukkah under the circumstances, obviously. If you'd like more on Yair's story, uh, you can go to fox5sandiego.com, click that scene on top. Shay, thank you again. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. We'll, we'll be, be right back. back.